What are, your fear, what are the fears and desires that are driving you? Number two, and I, said, I think I just covered this, what does your past tell you about your present? And in terms of dating and relationships in your 20s, this number two is important because what you need to do, as Kierkegaard sometimes says, we need to bring ourselves to the bar of judgment. This is where I think it's a good idea to bring our past relationships, successes and failures, and this is romantic relationships and friendships, we need to bring that forward and give a good long look at them, a really honest and attentive look, and a loving look at ourselves in the past. And notice the places we really screwed up, the places where we hurt people, where we hurt ourselves, and to figure out how that's impacting our present. Our present ability to be close to somebody, or our present desire to hide behind something like technology, or to react strongly to other people's successes and failures, right? So to find out what the past is bringing into our present. The third thing I think we need to do for some self-knowledge is to find a friend. Well, you've got a ton of friends. Look, you came with friends. Your friends are fantastic. If you don't have friends, keep coming to alumni association things. There are fabulous people here. There are great people here. You could be friends with awesome, wonderful, great looking people. I mean, you know, that's not important, but whatever. <laughs> find a friend. And by friend, oh shoot, I'm going back to Aristotle, I mean find a really good friend. Not just a friend who likes the same movies as you, not a friend who's just a colleague at work you get along with, but a friend who can really be honest with you. A friend who can tell you, okay, here's where you really screwed up. Or here's what I think you're really good at. Or a friend who can say to you, here's what I think you really offer in a relationship. Or here's what I think you need to work on before you get in a relationship. Or the really scary thing, a friend, only a friend could tell you. Here's why it doesn't work sometimes for you. And that's a really scary thing, to let a friend know you so well that you allow that person to tell you, to help you figure out how some things of your past might be coming into your present to, to stop you from moving forward. The fourth thing I think you need, and I'm only going to say five, fourth, the fourth thing, fourth piece that I think is a part of this self-knowledge thing is this. I hope, you, I hope this is clear. It's to ask yourself, ask ourselves, I'll ask myself this too, shoot. What kind of moats do you build? You know what a moat is? I mean, we really don't live in the time of castles. I, I think that would be fabulous, but you know what a moat is? Put it around your castle, and then you, you get in your castle and you hunker down while Hurricane Sandy goes by, right? And you hope that the moat doesn't like take over, right? Moat is the way that we surround ourselves with a layer of protection, right? And sometimes that is, I use just my happy persona out there as the moat, right? To protect me from people, from, from having people really get to know what's going on with me. Sometimes the moat is, I'm so busy, I'm working so hard, I can't really have relationships. Sometimes the moat is, I'm so drunk, nobody can figure out who I really am where I'm that person who's the cruise director of all of our friend group. A moat can be any kind of identity we take on, any kind of technology we use to build a layer between ourselves and the people who really want to come into our lives. So that's a really important question to ask ourselves when we're thinking about self-knowledge. What kind of moats do I build? And who gets to get across them? How hard is it to get across those moats? And the fifth thing that I think that we need to ask ourselves when we're trying to get the kind of self-knowledge we need for real dating and relationships is this. Isn't this hard? I'm laying down the law here. I feel like I'm being really serious with you. <laughs> Number five, how do we need to get out of our own way? A lot of times when I talk to recent alums and my nieces and nephews and other young people much younger than myself, I often find 
we get in our own way a lot when it comes to dating and relationships. What do I mean by that? We get in our own way with that baggage that we have. We put up all kinds of reasons that we can't commit or that we can't really be close to somebody. We take out on that person all kinds of things that, that are coming out of our past and out of our psychic states that we haven't really paid enough attention to. And then we find that those people are, are kind of unknowing victims of all kinds of dramas that are, that are coming from nowhere they understand, right? So how can we get out of our own way? Sometimes that just means being more courageous than we are right now. Sometimes that means stop, that we have to stop telling ourselves half-truths. 